All right, so for those of you that follow the channel, you might remember that crash that ended up costing me about 700 bucks. But for those of you who didn't see that video, well, we'll just show you. We'll just kind of show you what happened. Oh, yeah. no. It's a screen. For, there goes an ND filter. Good, everything broke. Frames toast. Batteries toast. It looks like part of my flight controller's broken. Yeah. Sucks. It's like 500 bucks. I mean, and that's even if a motor isn't broken, so. All right, so since that crash, I've really sat down and I've rethought the way that I arm and I disarm my drone. Now, because of the title, there's gonna be a couple of people who are here just for my beta flight settings. So I'm just gonna put those on the screen right away so those people can just check it out and then get out of here. All right, so for those of you that wanna know the reasoning behind why I have my transmitter set up, when I was rethinking my process, I really wanted to address three separate things. One, I didn't want any accidental armings. Two, I wanted a little bit of safety so that when I, the drone was taking off and landing, it would be letting people know through a beep that that drone was gonna come in and then they would be able to watch for it. And then the third thing, which is the main thing of the video, was I wanted a redundant arming so that if I bump just a single switch, my drone isn't gonna follow the sky like it did in that crash. Okay, now to really overcome these three obstacles, I really wanted to think how the layout on my transmitter was gonna be. Now I'm using the DJI FPV transmitter and I'm using the two switches on the right side for all my arming and disarming sequences. Now, a little bit of reason why I chose the right side, when I'm landing, altitude matters a little bit more than pitch and roll. So I thought it'd just be easier to always have my left hand on the controller and then I can activate my toggle switches with my right hand with a little bit more freedom. Now, to address the first thing, no accidental armings. My drone is set up to actually be able to arm at a pretty severe angle up to 45 degrees. In case I ever crash it and I'm right side up, I can still get the drone off the air and back to me. But because of that, there's a little bit of a safety hazard because if it was just a single arm situation, just a bump of a switch could actually get the propellers moving and that would be kind of disastrous if it was in my hands or someone else's. So on, the, on my transmitter, the front switch here, it needs to be to the middle position and then my drone is pre-armed. Now from here, I can actually go ahead and arm my drone and I do that with the second switch and I actually just move that all the way forward and then my propellers will start to, start to spin. But the cool thing about that is this middle position on the front one, while this top switch is all the way forward, actually activates my beeper. And this does two things for me. One, it lets people around know that the drone propellers are spinning because when it's idled down, it's actually not that loud. But the beeper, it's gonna let people know that something's going on, get them to turn and look and watch the drone before I take off. All right, so once the drone is in the air, the, the drone is actually beeping and that is a reminder to me to make a deci de decision and it's letting me know that I'm in a single arm situation. Now I do have the option to stay in a single arm situation and all I have to do is move my front switch from the pre-arm to the down position and then the drone's gonna stop beeping but I'm one switch away from disarming my drone. On the other hand, I can go into a redundant arm situation by moving that front switch forward. Now, at any time, either one of these switches can go down, but as long as either one of those is forward, my drone is gonna stay armed and in the air. So then I'm flying and I'm fully armed. I'm not likely to bump both switches at the same time, and I would actually have to move both switches to disarm the drone. So it's really a perfect situation because I don't have that accidental disarm, and we don't have any issues with uh, basically my drone falling out of the air like you saw at the beginning of the video. So now, as the drone's coming back, I mean, disarming my drone would be as simple as throwing both switches, but luckily I have the option, because of safety reasons, to actually just move my front switch into the middle position again. And as you'll remember from my arming sequence, this will actually turn on my beeper. So I can come in without a beeper and you know move my front switch all the way forward, but the middle position lets me tell people that there's a drone coming in. I mean, when I'm flying in the air, it is fairly loud, but the beeper just lets people know that I'm planning on coming into the landing zone. So once I'm in that middle position and the drone actually lands on the landing pad, I'm just one switch away again, and it's just simple disarm and the drone's on the ground. So that's kind of how I went about my arming and disarming sequence. 
uh, like I said at the beginning, it's all about safety um, in terms of only letting the drone turn on and off when you want it to. So if you guys have any questions, I'll post my beta flight settings here at the end of the video so that you guys can check them out, pause it, look them over. But if you have any specific questions, let me know and I'll answer them in the comments. So safe flying.